ago when I came back to Leeds, um, I met a filmmaker, Mohamed al Daraji, and he said we, we were back at film school together and he told me his idea to make um, a feature film in Iraq. He'd already made one film there, Aklam, and he said, I need for you to find me the budget to make, to make the film. Now, I'd worked in production for a while, but I never had to find a penny of financing. So I, I agreed to it, but then the reality struck, well, where do, we get this, where do we get this funding from? So we started developing the, the storyline, the, the treatment, putting a film package together, sending it out to about 50 funds all across the world, and 50 rejections came back. Um, the first port really where we where we went to was the film festivals. Our clan was going to a lot of festivals so it gave us an opportunity to meet other filmmakers, financiers, uh, funds across the world. Um, we had to look first and foremost outside of the UK because at that at this stage our company hadn't produced anything in-house. We had no relationship with the UK Film Council. We didn't really have a relationship with Screen Yorkshire. So we needed to start outside and the key place to do this was at the film festivals where they had co-production markets. So there's um, the cinema in Rotterdam. Um, the Rotterdam Lab as well was a good place where I went where they taught talk to me about pitching, developing the project, how to, how to discuss the project, what the financiers were going, going to be looking for. So when I started pitching, I'd first learn you know, how to make the project sound commercially viable, how to, how to really try and sell it so that it wasn't, you know, we're making a foreign language film first and foremost, and it's not necessarily the first thing that ticks all the boxes for a commercial success. So we were going in from this angle trying to, to, to make everybody consider it that way. Then a producer spoke to me and he said, look, the at the end of the day, it's about the project. You've got to engage people creatively with the story. So once, we, once, once we'd nailed really what the story was that we were telling, we were able then to, to put the business to one side and push the project creatively first. We went to the Dubai Connection. Now, because I'm doing Middle Eastern film, at the time, there was, there was very few Middle Eastern funds setting up. They were just beginning. But in Europe, they were more well established. The, the Gutenberg Fund in Switzerland, uh, the Rotterdam Hubert Ball Fund, um, the, all, all of these had long relationships um, with, with filmmakers. Uh, the World Cinema Fund at Berlin, the Berlin Al Market. So these were all these were all well-established funds. We were hoping that because our project was, was different, it was an Iraqi project, this may give us an in with some of the funds. So gradually with the development, we, uh, we, we started building it up. The project, the storyline uh, started getting stronger. Uh, it, was a, it was a Middle Eastern project, but we enlisted the help of a local writer, Jennifer Norwich, um, to come aboard to give the story a Western perspective. It would, it's also, we knew it, as we were building it up, we were also ticking the boxes for the cultural fund if we were eventually going to be able to get it. And what we did then was we, we, we approached Sundance. We'd heard that they had a lab in Utah where you could you could work on the script development because we knew that this would be the, if, if we had a strong script, then hopefully we could enlist, enlist some, some, some good funds. Um, the Sundance Lab said, well, it, it's great, but what we think would be the best part, the, be the best starting block for you would be to start at the, the lab that we have in Jordan. So they had a lab in Jordan where um, the director and the writer could work with more experienced writers and mentors to develop the project. So we didn't start from, we, we kind of started thinking we, we need to go for the finance, but then we, we moved back a little bit and thought, okay, we need, to, we need to go for the creative. So we developed it at the Jordan um, Lab with the help of some, some top list um, writers. We then were selected with the project to go to Sundance in Utah uh, for the writer's lab there. It was a similar, a similar process. Uh, Sundance then have a, a producers conference. Now this is fantastic, especially if you're looking to make more, more connections within the West. They had all the studio heads present, the independent studios, uh, agents, um, directors, producers, American producers. There was a lot of talk about the funding structures over there, the post-production, um, the strategies of how you can, you can work with them. And as Piers was saying, that 
about the, fu the funding structure. They have a very clean funding structure on how, to fi on how to finance the project. But for our little independent film, we still weren't fitting into the boxes of how to of, of the way that we needed to finance it. So how the financing then built up with our project, it was very much like a patchwork system. Um, we enlisted the help of Antonio Bird, a British director that was also producing. She came aboard and was our creative executive producer. We then approached Screen Yorkshire and met with Hugo and we talked to him about the project. He raised his concerns. He, he went in in with us about the development of the project, both um, creatively and financially and logistically. Hugo supported us and he said he'd give us some development funding. This then enabled us to approach the UK Film Council. The UK Film Council, um, as you can imagine, the, the business affairs department wasn't too thrilled at the idea of, of co-producing with an Iraqi project and a first-time producer. So they um, put me in touch with Pippa Cross. Pippa Cross, is, as, as many of you know, is a fantastic executive producer. She came aboard and gave me... Um, she, she, she made me think differently about how to put my project together. She, the challenges that we faced was how do we make this, this project um, culturally valuable, viable for the UK? It's an Iraqi film. It's going to be an Iraqi cast. Predominantly, it's going to be Iraqi crew due to the safety. So what, what importance did it have for, for, for British culture? So we were able to go through, man, manage to find, to find the answers for that. Um, the, the project passed the cultural test, the inter intermediary um, cultural test that you have to do. I think it's 16 points. So we passed that. Along the way then, we had to go back to Europe and ask everybody for money. Now, because of the project that we were doing, it's a mother searching for her son, it's got many social issues in Iraq that, were, that, that weren't being addressed. We were able to enlist the help of social funds in in Holland, I'm not so sure about the UK, they have many social funds to help um, you know, the, the, the Middle East or developing countries. And they had two funds called the HEVOS um, and DUAN. Um, these were social funds. They weren't meant for the actual production. They were meant for us to do training. So we decided along the way with the production that we would train up the crew. This training enabled us then to also to cover some of our production costs. This made it eligible that way. So whilst we were training people up, we were getting funding as well for that. So that was an interesting way to be able to get some, some production funding. Um, throughout the production, we, we faced a, a number of issues. The co-production was a seven country co-production. Uh, the UK, France, Netherlands, Iraq, uh, it ended up with Egypt, UAE, and Palestine in there. Now, the reason why it was such a crazy crow production was people were coming in for little pockets here and there. Uh, in France, we were eligible for the Fond Sud. They have um, the CNC, which is their equivalent of the UK Film Council. Uh, the CNC um, Fond Sud funding enabled us to get, I think we got 150,000 from there, which in the scale of big productions isn't much, but for this, this project that sat just over a million, it really helped us. Now, half the funding for the Fond Sud, half of it had to be spent in the Middle East, in the, in the developing country, and half had to be spent in France. So when you're getting these funds, it was non-recoupable, which is really good, which, which for any producer is what you want, as much recoupable as you, as uh, non-recoupable as you can. The non-recoupable then, Helped, helped us, and especially with the CNC and the UK Film Council, it enables you to start, to start getting recognition for the project from outside external financiers. So when we then went back to the Middle East, at this point we had no funding actually from Iraq. The Ministry of Culture had told us they were going to give us half of our budget. It never materialised, sadly. Um, but we were able to go to a large um, broadcaster out there, Sunnyland Ayate. They co-produce, they have their own TV networks. And they came aboard to do a pre-sale for the Middle East. So this actually helped us with the, finan the financing. Sunnyland um, they, Ayate, they came aboard as a co-producer, but they also pre-bought pre it. So there was, there was two sections of financing there. 
Um, it didn't help much during the production because we had to cash flow that. They, a lot of our finance didn't come through till post-production. The same, the same um, for example, with our sales agent. We had two sales agents. Uh, we had the option to go with a UK sales agent or a French sales agent. Um, the, the, the contracts were totally different because obviously the mindset in France is, is very different to over here. Uh, for the UK, the contract was for 25 years. They would come aboard as an executive producer and they wouldn't put forward an MG on, on, with it being a little independent film. The French sales company, on the other hand, because of France's position, were able to offer us a lot more favourable terms. So we were able to negotiate a deal for seven years, plus more if they, if, if they needed it for America, which would be 15, or, or up to 25 years for certain deals. Um, they gave us an MG and they didn't come aboard as an executive producer. So we were able to find, find a better deal with the French sales company. So it helped the project as well with it being more, with it being a co-production and not entirely the UK. We were able to find benefits all over, but meanwhile we still had to maintain the core of fulfilling our obligations to each of our funders. So as each funder came along, it, and it, 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 it minimised the, the, the way that we could, we could work with other, other future financiers. So that's something as well to think about with your contracts. Um, in post-production, um, I'll go back a little bit, um, sorry I'm jumping, the UK Film Council was only able initially to support us with development, they had to pull back when we went to Iraq because we didn't have, we, we couldn't fulfil all the obligations that they had hoped. So with the UK Film Council, we then, once we had, we, we, once we were going into post-production and we were still filming, our, our, our filming went from six weeks to six months. We were able, yeah, it's <laughs> a nightmare. Um, it, was a, it was a road movie from the north and the south to Iraq while you've got chaos and, and occupation going on. Oh, sorry, I'll wrap it up very quickly. Um, so the UK Film Council came back in post-production. So this might be something for you guys where if they're not able to come in at, at production stage, they might be able to come in at post-production. Of course, with, with it all changing at the moment, there should be a funding body in place by the time you're ready to, to film. But... Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, an unknown territory for all of us and I think you have to open your eyes to, to working possibly abroad or bringing people over here to trying to bring inward financing here, so, so yeah.